Okay, uh, got my 450. This is the original recoil out of it. I'm not quite sure what's wrong, but this pulley is just clicking in here. It's not rolling the saw over. Had a buddy who had a 445 recoil, same thing. This one's only, only difference is, is this seems to be a two piece pulley or this is a one piece. Um, but it came to me filthy, so I'm gonna take a little bit of time here to clean some of this out. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because I don't even know if this saw is gonna run. I haven't ran it in quite some time. Uh, and I can't find my air blower, but eventually I'll find my air blower and I'll clean this out with that. And this will take short work of that. Okay, it's not clean, but it's better. So I got to pull these last two hardware screws out of this old cover. Because this one didn't come with hardware screws, but that's fine. Still got monster compression for a 450, so that's a good sign, right? This saw has been monkeyed with. It's not very old. It's kind of a shame it, that it's got mismatched fasteners everywhere, but it does. It has mismatched fasteners everywhere. Um, for example, two of the screws are 5.30 seconds Allen. One is a OEM, which is an Allen and a flathead. And then the other is, I think, a steel screw because it's a Torx and a flathead. But, like I said, this for this purpose, it will do. Uh, not exactly a super, super valuable saw, but uh, it's got a little bit of sentimental value to my family, so... Little bugger's gonna stick around. There's no gas in it. Probably a good thing. So, see if this bugger will go today or not. If it will, I'll go stick it in a piece of maple over there and rip it in half. You guys probably can't even see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm just putting the recoil on. Of course, it's not on there straight. So it's got to come partially back off again. There it goes. Now we're getting somewhere. This screw is down here. Like I said, this recoil is probably not going to be on this saw very long. It'll, I'll probably rebuild this old recoil because it's in a little nicer shape after I get a new pulley and uh, might change the rope out. I don't know. Just got my Husqvarna 61 back yesterday or the day before. I'm going to be doing a video on that saw also. Maybe tonight yet, I don't know. That's a stupid Torx, or that, yeah, Torx head. Which I don't have my Torx T handles here, so I gotta use a flathead on that one. Which, you know, it's fine, it works. Over tighten these boogers. And 
it's got summer oil in it, but it's about 40 degrees today. So I'm going to go grab some gas and oil and I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. As I was saying, I haven't run this saw in a while, so it's got summer oil in it. But it's almost 40 degrees today. So what I'm going to do, it's got about a half a tank of bar oil. I'm going to put winter oil right on top. And then I'm going to try and run most of that summer oil out of it today while it's warm. Or in a couple days when it's supposed to get up to almost 60. Let's see if the sucker will even crank. Nice thing about these saws, some people hate them, but I don't mind it. Primer bulb. go find a piece of wood to stick this in. I think I got some fairly hard maple over here. It's just silver maple, but it's sound. So, And I gotta cut it down just a little bit to get it through the door. Everything's a mess over here because we're just starting to get some snow melt going on. It makes a mess of everything. I'm gonna move the mount. Bear with me on the camera angle. The camera angle is probably not going to be that great. Okay, that's not too bad. Pause you guys and bring you back when I go down on the wood pile. I'm gonna go cut a little more. Okay, I got just a little bit of oak down here to cut these couple little top logs I brought in the other day. Perfect size wood for this. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Okay, I'll meet you guys back up the truck in just a second. Okay, just got done running that. Some of the things I've always liked about this saw, um, it's always been reliable, other than this, this is the first fit this saw has given me in a couple years, and I don't think it'll be very difficult to fix I think it'll be just as simple as uh, pulling this piece off and putting a new pulley on there and I'll have this recoil back because this one just is toast I mean you can hear it slipping in there and then you roll it this way and it wants to catch but then you put it on the saw and it just does the same thing but uh, my buddy just gave me this recoil, uh, just, you know, because that's kind of the way him and I are. This chain isn't the best on here, so that's not a good representation of how well this saw cuts, because it cuts a lot better than that when it's got a good sharp chain. That's, and that oak is ungodly hard. Um, so, the trees... I'll be right back. Um, like I was saying, I just went ahead and was cleaning it up just a little, cleaning the chain side cover out. <clears throat> One of the most common questions I get asked, sorry, I'm trying to get it to where I can see and you guys can see at the same time. Um, One of the most common questions I get asked is, would I buy this again? Um, yeah, is when I bought it, uh, the tank was busted, <clears throat> but it had a brand new bar and chain on it, and I paid five dollars for it. And the only thing I've had to do to it in two years is now put a recoil in it and sharpen the chain. <clears throat> I mean, it's been a a really good saw for me, a uh, really good saw overall. To be honest, it's it's not a it's not a pro saw by any means, but it gets the job done. Um, I said it's it's been sitting here heat soaking for a minute. Simple enough. It's not too hard to start when I'm out in the middle of nowhere and it's cold. Um, kill switch is simple. Uh, it does have a primer bulb, which is kind of it's nice like today when it's been sitting dry for a while and you got to start it the top cover's easy to get off <clears throat> this one's busted but i just stick it back in the hole and it hasn't come off yet oh, i need to clean this air filter the air filter is nasty very nasty i might have to pick me up a new air filter sucker is just full of crap let's check the plug while we're here let's see how it's been running when I got this saw it still had the factory husky plug in it as you can see I don't know if you guys can see that it's running pretty good that's pretty chocolatey brown maybe just a touch on the lean side um, I've got to get one of those little splined, uh, slot screwdrivers. You guys that work on x -Torx more often know what I'm talking about. Let's see. What up here, Mr. Piston? Trying to get a decent look at that piston. And it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of carbon on top of that either. Clean that off. <clears throat> I'll probably just buy a new air filter for that and clean this one and keep it also. 
Because as you can see, this guy's just packed, clear full of shit. Just put a fuel filter in this. One of the last times I ran it, so I'm not too worried about that. But I'll end up replacing that air filter because it is nasty. It's got lots of lots of buildup in it. Like I said, this is it's got a little clip that's supposed to be here, and it's broke off. But I just poke this back down in there clip it in and it stays in so I don't have to worry about it I'm not gonna buy a new thing just because this one's bro broke at the bottom uh, it still functions the way it's designed to function so I'm gonna leave the stupid thing alone um, like I said I only paid five dollars for this a year and a half ago and for no two years ago almost two and a half it'll be two and a half in a couple months and it's it's more than paid for itself. Um, now that I got this recoil issue fixed, it's probably going to get a new air filter and go back on the truck. <clears throat> it's one of my little, you know, quick light, get a truckload of firewood cut quickly type saws. Um, anyway, just a general overview. These are an awesome saw if you don't have a whole lot of money and you want something that's going to be reliable. Um... You can pick these up pretty using, reasonable most of the time used. Uh, I personally wouldn't pay more than 150 bucks for like a nice one. <laughs> Just because uh, once you get much farther past that, you're pretty much paying for a new one. I don't know what these cost new now, but they used to be like 300 or three and a half. And if you're going to pay 200 for one, why not spend the extra $100 and get a new one plus a year warranty at that point. So... Uh, great saws for what they are. They're not a 550. <laughs> They're just a really good farm and ranch saw if you need something to go, you know, toss in your truck and beat up and not feel too bad about beating it up if you end up, like, like for this example, cracking a recoil or blowing the gear out of it. I don't, you know, I'll just take this apart and I'll put a new, probably put a new rope in it and new pulley. And then this will go back on there because this is a little nicer shape and it's actually the same color as the saw. And then I'll keep this as a backup in case I get blown up one or something. But anyway, that's all on the 450 today, guys. I'm getting kind of lengthy. Sorry about it. Bye.